as always here at the Pig and Whistle Inn in Stormwind, I go through a variety of subjects with regards to World of Warcraft. So grab a bottle or a pint, sit back and enjoy. Today's subject we're going to be going over sort of PvP. This is something that I've done, I think it was actually my very first podcast. But, you know, sort of going over TBC PvP because obviously that introduces arenas. Plus we're going to be looking at sort of the Arisen scene at arena season two within uh, shadowlands and what it's like at the moment pretty much but let's get into the weekly stuff so we have a couple of world bosses we have valinor the light of eons up in bastion and we have morgeth tormentor of the damned in the moor now the moor world boss i believe is up every week I believe it's up every week, so don't quote me on that, but they might put it into a rotation very soon, but I'm not too sure at the moment. But Valinor is the one in rotation this week, so do be sure to head over to Bastion to claim your anima for the week. The Mythic Sanctum of Domination is out, so if you are interested in watching any world firsts, if your guild want to progress any mythics, then now you certainly can within the raiding scene so definitely head over to sanctum of domination get that mythic all started up and uh, hop into it with your guild or just watch something on twitch if you want to watch race to world first that kind of thing we also have a brawl this week it is packed house now what this is is a 15 versus 15 it's first to kill the other team and it is in like arena uh, maps so Nagrand Arena, you got uh what are the others? Ruins of Lord are on, that kind of thing. Blades Edge, maybe you know, them small packed maps. So definitely make sure that you win the brawl this week because you get that nice quest, some conquest and some honour to go along with it. And we also have Warlords of Draenor time walking this week. So make sure that you do your weekly one Draenor dungeon or time walking dungeon just to collect that 500 time walking badges just in case you're saving up for a mount for say wrath of lich king week mr pandaria or even if you're getting your mount for wall of the drain all this week congratulations and uh yeah that's the weekly stuff that's all that we can go over really for that gonna call the podcast there to be honest nice and easy one this week <laughs> so we will look at season two and tbc arenas now they're very much the same but they're very much different at the same time so with tbc you have many different things to look at but this is my opinion obviously not everyone's gonna have it the same not everyone's gonna be the exact same opinion but We have, for TBC, you have a lot more of a simplistic nature to it. So by this, what I mean is it's not as in-depth as to what the classes have compared to, say, retail. So with retail, everyone's got sort of an out. And what this means is they can counteract something in some way. So druids, for example, in TBC... They don't have a magic dispel, which leaves them very susceptible to stuff like warlocks and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, in retail, that they do have this. As a healing druid, they do have this. And uh, this contributes massively in retail because you need to be dispelling a lot. And in sort of TBC, you're looking to dispel stuff here and there. You're not necessarily looking to just spam dispel, possibly. But, the again, with uh, druids not having a dispel, they make up for it in a lot more ways. So, in this way being, polymorph is a lot tougher to land on them. They can't necessarily be polymorphed. So, that CC is completely out the window. They have a stronger matchup against that. So, like they can shapeshift out of it. And they have constant heal over times, they have stuns, they have charges, they have cyclones. So they're very good in multiple different situations against different classes. That is something else that, you know, TBC really does have over Shadowlands. And this is, they're all the same. So all of the points that I'm going to bring up are the same. 
but it's a lot more highlighted in either Shadowlands or TBC. So, favoritable matchups. In TBC, this is insane, because you pin a warrior against a mage in TBC, warrior's got no chance. You know, same skill level, same playing field, gear, etc. Don't even get me started on gear, I'll go over that soon. But, you know, same playing field, same skill level, same gear, mage wins. It's not even a challenge, to be honest, for the mage. Whereas if you're looking at sort of Shadowlands, you... The warrior can outplay the mage. The mage is still favourited to win, I would say. But the warrior can outplay the mage. And there is a certain element of your skill versus, like, the skill that, the skill level, the skill cap that you have in TBC is a lot lower than, say, the skill level or the skill cap in Shadowlands. Mainly because you've got so many more buttons to utilise and use and so many sort of small interactions with it. So a interaction that I can think of is they recently brought out a new trinket in Season 2 and this trinket is called Maledict. And what this trinket does is it basically deals damage over a 4 second duration and while it's dealing its damage it is applying a healing absorption. So any healing that is healed into this healing absorption, up to a certain amount of course, is not actually healing the target, it is just absorbed by this maledict trinket. And if you were to utilise this on a warrior, you say use this on a warrior, and they press reflect, like spell reflect, after like this has already hit them, then the damage will be reversed or reverted back to you after they've hit this spell reflect. And this is a bit of a quirky interaction, to be honest, and it doesn't necessarily seem like it should work in that way. But, you know, TBC Warriors, they have Reflect as well, but it's a lot more easy to play around because, well, you see see a Defensive Stance ability, Spell Reflect, so you see them switch to Defensive Stance if they're in, like, a Nova from a Mage, and then they press spell reflect and you already know that it's going to happen so you stop casting so you just throw like a little scorch in there or something it's you know one of them little things whereas in shadowlands you don't necessarily know when they're going to press it it's tough to some warriors are really good and they have you know i play a druid for example a boomkin druid and whenever i go to cc a warrior there is always that fear of having a spell reflect up. This is something that I constantly have on my Omnibar, which tracks cooldowns. It's an add-on that tracks cooldowns. And if they don't have a spell reflect on cooldown, then I go to cast the Cyclone, and I duke it at the end to see if he's watching me almost. And some warriors are good, some warriors do watch. And if they get duked, they get duked. It's one of them things. If they don't, they don't. But... Ultimately, it's a lot tougher to play around certain cooldowns in Shadowlands. It is a lot more simplistic in TBC because, you know, everything's a lot slower paced. Everything's going at 110 miles an hour in Shadowlands. And, you know, you're cruising down a country lane at like 60 in, you know, TBC. It's that kind of thing. You have a lot more thinking time. That's the best way to put it. And uh, this can be... (sighs) You can attribute this to all sorts of things. So the amount of spells that are in the game in Shadowlands, the amount of different variables which come with these, you know, multiple spells. You've got the Covenant abilities, you've got everything, whereas TBC, everyone's got their set level 70 spells, and that's it. You know, their 1 to 70 level spells, and that's it. There's no sort of extra there is obviously your racials that you have to include. So orcs are reduced stuns. You know, paladins or paladins. Blood elves can have the silence effect. Undeads have will of the forsaken to get out of fears and stuff. So there's some things that you do have to play around, such as racials. But there's no actual other spells that people can, you know, utilize. Unless it's an engineering tool. Like I said, racials, that kind of thing. So, obviously, with TBC, you're going to have a lot of uh, resists and uh, a lot of, 
resistances come into play. So this isn't apparent in retail at all. You can have misses and stuff and dodges such as like melees, but resists. Can you even miss a spell? No, I don't think you can. You can only miss or like a spell if uh, the enemy pops a cooldown. So say a demon hunter pops darkness and they're just absorbing it or it's missing or like nether walk. They're just immune to it, that kind of thing. You can't actually get any resists on the on the characters or the pets as it were. Whereas if you look at TBC and you look at Warlocks or are the best example for this, especially their uh, minion, the little fell hound, fell hounder, <laughs> fell hunter that runs about and just, you know, starts spell locking you and dispelling you. Oh, absolute annoying pet. But these uh, pets have something like a th- insane resist. And you can be standing there, there's clips of just druids trying to like cyclone this fell hunter pet. And it takes about eight casts. So I think Cyclones are two second cast, 1.5 second cast. I want to say two seconds in TBC. So it takes eight casts, 16 seconds. You're just standing there trying to Cyclone this damn little fell hunter while your mate's trying to 1v2 out there doing absolutely everything he can to survive. And, you know, these aren't things that you've got to worry about. You've got to outplay your opponent in Shadowlands you've got a LOS you've got to utilize the like stuff around you you've got to utilize your teammate certain small interactions that might help that kind of thing but resists can be very RNG based you can get absolutely lucky with resists and they get no luck with them it's that kind of thing it's um kind of like mage and frost nova so what a mage what a mage's damage comes from is Frost Nova. And this is because you'd usually take the Shatter uh, talent, and this increases the chance when the target is frozen to have a crit. And this is by like 50% if you've maxed it out. So you can Nova something and then just throw an Ice Lance. And Nova sometimes breaks on damage, but sometimes it doesn't. And this is where it gets fun. So you'd throw an Ice Lance and it will crit. It will do like 2k. And then the Nova doesn't break. So you throw another Ice Lance in. And Ice Lance is an instant cast, by the way. So so you throw another Ice Lance in. Crits again, 2k. Still doesn't break. Throw another one in, 2k. Throw another one, another, and they're dead. That's it. They died in one Frost Nova. It's not really outplaying your opponent, is it? I say that, I play Boomkin in arenas in Shadowlands and I press Convoke, so, you know, it's one of them things. But compared to that, with, say, a Convoke, a Convoke, you need to, you or you need to set it up perfectly compared to, say, you just press Nova and then Ice Lance. So with a Convoke, if you're playing against, like, a Shaman, you've got to make sure that they don't have Grounding Totem or a Kick. And uh, the kick is 15 seconds. Grounding Totem is 25 or 30 seconds. So you've got a 15 second window. But you've also got to make sure that the other person on their team doesn't have their kick. Or their stun. Or their interrupt. You've got to make sure that they're not on you. You've got to make sure like that you can actually see them. You're not just going to be wasting this convoke and stuff. So there's many different variables to get off these sort of... Um, abilities in retail and you've got to plan it out with your team and you've got to set it up perfectly and I don't think there needs to be any sort of setup in terms of TBC maybe certain comps compositions like Rogue Mage obviously is a very simple setup you sap one and you kill the other and if it's say like I don't know we'll go with like another mage the mage might trinket the sap and in which case the rogue will blind. He might ice block the blind, in which case you just counter spell and sheep him. It's that simple. It's very much... It's simplistic again. It's nothing tough, 
Whereas if you're going for a clone in Shadowlands, you've got many different things to worry about. Again, you've got to get their trinket. You've got to get big cooldowns. You've got to get multiple kicks out of the way. You've got to get multiple grounding totems, possibly, if you're playing against multiple shamans. There's many different things that can stop you from getting this. And uh, it's all about working together with your team as much as you can more so than what it is in TBC. Obviously, it's still about working with your team in TBC, don't get me wrong, but the teamwork in 3v3s at, like in Shadowlands, I would say is a lot more higher skill capped than what it is in TBC because of how simplistic it is. And that's kind of why I love both of them, to be honest. TBC is so very simplistic when you come from Shadowlands arenas like 3v3s etc because there's a lot less buttons a lot less ways in which anything can be stopped the games are a lot quicker just many different things but they're both very good in their own way don't get me wrong it's just I would say TBC is a lot more simplistic in terms of its PvP setting for arenas and I think in Wrath of the Lich King Cataclysm, it's when they started to give everyone everything. And that's when it started to become a bit more like retail arenas where every healer has like dispellable magics, such as druids that didn't have them in the past, that kind of thing. Everyone's got certain trinkets and that, you know, everyone's got everything, that kind of thing. But another thing that you need to take into consideration is basically like your composition so with uh, tbc arenas there are better comps there's always going to be better comps this is both in shadowlands and tbc but there's uh, going to be comps that don't make sense but still kind of work i mean i've played against double hunter in tbc it absolutely slaps like i'm a mage what am i meant to do against double hunters absolutely nothing What's many people meant to do against double hunters that just press beast, beast your wrath and let their pet one shot something? Like, it's absolutely ludicrous. I just drop, drop dead because I can't root them. I can't do anything to them. I can't CC them because they're running that like unstoppable talent or whatever it is where the only thing that can stop them is death. That is literally what it says in the tooltip. So, like, in, TBC, you can practically run everything and enjoy it. There's niche things to look out for in TBC that there isn't necessarily so in retail, or it wouldn't work as well in retail, that kind of thing, because everyone's got their own self here, or everyone's got their own sustain. You can see, see everyone at any time, that kind of thing. But so, composition does matter in retail more so than TBC, but like I said again, it's about having fun in arenas. Some people are very competitive and they want to run the best comp. That's what makes it fun for them. Some people just want to goof about. Double Hunter, Double Shadow Priest, Shadow Priest Mage, absolutely anything. It's great fun. As long as you have fun, it doesn't matter. Now, comms are a lot more... Comms are different in both retail and uh, uh, TBC. So, in retail, I'm a DPS and... Uh, Obviously, I play in twos or threes games. More so, I enjoy threes more so than I do twos, mainly because of my class. But I'm yet to play a few twos with the new legendary that I got, which is like a one minute convoke. So, you know, it's a go every minute, that kind of thing. But in retail comms, I'm constantly talking. I'm constantly saying what cooldowns have been used, what they don't have. Do they have trinket? Do they have bubble? Do they have you know, Ashen Hollow, do they have Sack, which is, you know, blessing a sacrifice from a Paladin, do they have Grip, do they have AMZ from a Death Knight, that kind of thing. I'm constantly asking my other DPS what they have, we're constantly talking to each other, like, do I need help, is this me pressing something as a defensive, is it you pressing something, are you pain supping me, uh, leap me out, like leap of faith, that kind of thing, it's constant chatter. Whereas TBC, I find it a lot more slow-paced. Get into a game, I'm just chatting freely. I'm making my water, making my food, trading it over. 
And then we walk out and we basically say, okay, it's a warrior and a druid. Okay. So warrior charges in, you know, we open on the warrior. It's very simple. It's not, it's not me constantly speaking. It's okay. I'm going to poly him. Just don't touch him. That kind of thing. And then there'll be nothing after. I'm just killing the druid. Like I'm just killing druid, kill him. Uh, I'm still killing Druid. Okay, go back to Warrior now. Make the switch to Warrior, that kind of thing. So it's a lot more relaxed, I'd say. And it's a nice change of pace. But I prefer it when it's hectic. I prefer it when it's just absolute chaos. Mainly because that's when the skill comes through in the game. Because you keep a calm head, you know what cooldowns have been used, you know what you need to do to survive like their cooldowns, you know what you need to do to kill them and to set up your kill potential, that kind of thing. That's where the skill comes in. Whereas TBC, again, as like a priest mage, like you come up against a rogue mage, you can't do much. (laughs) You really can't do much. It's very much one of you is getting CC to shit and the other just can't, needs to just live. I don't know how they're going to live, but they just have to live somehow. And that's basically the arena. Whereas if you come up against a rogue mage, it's a lot more buttons that you can press and it's a lot easier to certainly survive that through a CC chain. And the other person's just getting absolutely run down at the same time. So... There's many different variables in terms of TPC and retail comms. One is really hectic in my personal experience because I'm usually the one, you know, being hectic. I'm usually the one calling out DPS cooldowns and stuff, whereas, you know, whoever's healing, like whoever I'm playing with who's healing will be calling out what the healer's used or like what the their DPS is going to be using or if they need to... Or if I need to press something to save myself, that kind of thing. So it's a lot more hectic in that way. Whereas, you know, TBC doesn't have these big cooldowns necessarily where you have to go, okay, you've got to press something to survive here. It's just very much consistent damage. And it's tough to, you know, go from one to the other, in all honesty. But gearing in terms of TBC... And retail is completely different as well. In terms of PvP as a whole, to be honest, obviously you've got the retail PvP vendors like they are in TBC. But with TBC, it's a weekly thing. It's a weekly currency. Whereas retail it is a constant thing. So you're constantly getting honor or conquest when you're playing compared to at TBC where the rating that you're at will give you a certain number of arena points, which is the currency for that week. And you can only get them weekly compared to, say, you know, 700 points that you can get over the course of a week for retail. Like retail, you obviously have a cap, but you can get these constantly throughout the day, even by losing games. That's the thing. So it's a lot easier to gear in retail. And I can understand why people like the TBC arenas and stuff. Because it does feel fulfilling when you get that first piece, when you get like 3,000 arena points for the staff, that kind of thing. But, you know, the constant, you know, seeing your progress is always really nice as well. And it's nice to mix it up. And once you've got that piece of gear in TBC, that's it. You can't really upgrade it. You either have to wait for the next season Or you have to get just a raid gear from, say, the latest raid, which is most likely better than PvP gear in, you know, terms of damage wise, maybe not resilience, but resilience being the the stat for PvPers because it reduces your critical uh, strike damage taken and it reduces the chance that you'll be critically struck or something like that or periodic effects like dots and stuff. Very weird, it's very much against uh, Warlocks, <laughs> I've noticed. But it's completely different in terms of gearing, comms, your composition, the simplistic nature of stuff, resists. There's loads of stuff that, you know, differs in terms of TBC and retail. It, not just arenas in Battlegrounds in general, 
because obviously you're looking at you know getting the marks for battlegrounds in order to buy your first steps or your first stages of pvp gear you're looking to just buy with honor in retail which is a currency that you get just by doing battlegrounds like tbc to be honest but they're so different and yet so great in every way some people hate them some people like them and some people like one of them some people like none of them that kind of thing but to me they're very good because they each have their own unique look or feel to them that's the thing i can be going absolutely ballistic at retail arenas and calling you know 20 different things that i don't even remember a set the second i leave that arena like i don't remember who was playing what who was where what was happening you just sort of know where everything is you're taking a lot of information on from the screen into your brain at one time compared to tbc whereas you're not looking at positioning as much if you're looking at like 2v2 it's very much a lot slower paced therefore your brain is reacting a bit slower to certain decisions you kind of can it's kind of like chess i would, I would say it's a lot more like chess the tbc arenas because you're it, the game is slower, therefore you can plan your moves ahead of time a lot more so than, you know, retail. You can still do this in retail, but you can only plan like one or two steps ahead. Whereas in TBC, you're planning, say, several. Like you're going to polymorph this target and then he's going to trink it. So your rogue's going to blind off of this and then go in for the sap. He might ice block this. If he ice blocks this, then I will counter spell him and then polymorph him. Like you're constantly thinking about what's going to happen and who your kill target is. But in a lot slower manner compared to retail. Whereas retail it might be, okay, I'm going to get this clone. He's going to master spell it. If you can keep the master spell, then... I can keep the clone up. I can switch the clone onto the priest and we can kill the war warrior. I'm just going to nuke down the hunter pets. And while the hunter's trying to revive the pets, we go on the hunter. It, It's a lot more... It's like 20D chess, that kind of thing, compared to just like 3D chess or whatever. You know, it's that chess board that's got, you know, m multiple layers, them kind of ones. I don't even know how them things work. It's like ridiculous. Would be interesting to find out, to be honest. Chess is always a good, like, good game. Do enjoy chess because, well, you know, it's about planning out your uh, your moves. Even though I'm not the best at doing so, I don't really play chess that way. I just look at something and go with my gut instinct, and that's what I do for arenas most of the time. But there is some, there's something that goes on in my head. You know, the cogs will, cog wheels do turn when I'm doing arenas, but it's just so different. In TBC, you're dying to one Frost Nova and just five Ice Lances. Whereas in retail, you're dying because your healer's in a CC and you're getting, you know, Avatar cooled down, uh, hunted by a Demon Hunter, like a Demon Hunter. You're getting blasted by Chaos Bolts here and there. You've done everything that you can. You've bark skinned. You frenzy regen, you shadow melded just to save your life for a second. You pop trinkets just to, you know, top yourself up. You... This... I can't really say how different they are. I can't do them both justice, but they're so good in their own unique ways. That's the thing. Like season two for Shadowlands, I get one shot. People are getting one shot left, right and centre. There's so much healing reduction in Season 2 and healing absorption that it's absolutely ludicrous. It's absolutely fucking nuts. I'm not going to lie. Like, pe everyone like has a healing reduction. Rogue's got it in, like, patch 9.1. Fury Warrior's got it. I think Boomkins were the only ones not to bloody get it at this point. Whereas, if you look at TBC, the only people who have healing reductions are... I think arms warriors. I'm trying to think. Yeah, I believe they're the only ones with a healing reduction in Mortal Strike. And that's what gives them their uniqueness. And this is what TBC is about. It's uniqueness within arenas. 
so you have more of an advantage against certain classes which is still the same in retail but you can outplay them in retail that's the thing like a lot more so than you know tbc you might need to get lucky with a certain trinket or something like that in tbc to beat them whereas in retail you can just utilize your cooldowns a lot better and or yeah just a lot better to defeat this class that you might have struggled with against in tbc so it's a bit of a weird one going back to this sort of pvp scene like i said this was my very first podcast and i think that i've gotten a lot better at doing the podcast since then so i wanted to revisit pvp and because tbc came out in that time it's a very different to compare the two in terms of like arenas compared like compared to what i did last year which was battlegrounds with uh, like retail pvp because you've got nothing to really compare it to in that regard they're just completely different like classic pvp compared to like tbc pvp against you know retail but thank you all very much for listening as always please do check out the social medias youtube twitch facebook everything can be found on the website for patreon members a new patreon podcast has gone up this week so make sure to check it out as well thank you all very much for listening as always and go with valor friend goodbye all.